Hello, my name is Tracy McGregor. I'm an instructor with the EMS University. I presently instruct CPR and first aid. I've been involved with CPR education for about five years now. In addition to that, I'm also a national registered EMT. I've held my registry since 2005. And I've also been involved with the fire service for about 14 years now. Today what we're going to discuss is anaphylactic reactions. Let's get started. So what is anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis is a Greek word <clears throat> meaning against or without protection as opposed, as opposed to prophylaxis for protection. Anaphylaxis accounts for about 400 to 800 deaths per year with a mortality rate of 3%. Anaphylaxis is the most severe type of allergic reaction and basically it's a severe allergic reaction that manifests in, with its signs and symptoms within 60 seconds of exposure. So here's the difference between an allergic reaction and an anaphylactic reaction. Allergic reactions tend to be local. Um, you know you'll have local edema. You'll have urticaria, which are hives and pruritus, which is itching. Allergic reactions that occur more rapidly tend to be more severe and more progressive to anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a systematic reaction shock. All you need to know, an allergy is an overly active response to a foreign invader to the body. It's the body's hypersensitivity to the invader that causes this. This is an overview of the immune system's primary and secondary response to a foreign invader. It's not an excruciating detail, but tells you all you'll ever need to know about this as an EMT or a medic. However, this is another story. So stay with me. When an outside foreign protein, an antigen, penetrates the body, the immune system attempts to respond to the invader and stop it from harming the body. Chemoreceptors, in this case the body's normal alarm systems to antigens, within the blood bounce off the invader if no defense, called an antibody, is present. The body uses hormones called histamines, which also can be looked at as calling in the troops, to repel and destroy the invader. White blood cells rush to the site where the blood vessels now dilate to provide the troops with easy access to the invader. Surround the invader and wall it off from the rest of the body in an attempt to destroy, expel, and or contain it with, with a protective cocoon. You see this all the time in a wonderful substance called pus. The body then builds up specialized white blood cells called antibodies specifically designed to destroy the new invader. Then, little chemical alarms tuned specifically for that invader will float through the bloodstream in case that antigen ever comes back. I like to think of it as trying shellfish. There's a lot of people who seem to be allergic to shellfish and you may try it, you know, at a later age in life, you know, be 18 or 20 or 30, and you might kind of get a sensation that just doesn't seem right. Well the body's looking at it as what is this? We're not used to this, we don't like this. And the next time you do this again, we're gonna make you pay for it. So I like to look at it as a more layman's approach and saying that the body doesn't like it and when you try it again, they're really gonna make you suffer for it. If a body is allergic, you won't get a standard response. The hypersensitive body may command a much larger and sometimes over-the-top response, and this is where you suffer for it in the analogy that I use. <clears throat> in terms where the body is concerned, the primary, first, immune response takes a lot of time. It takes time for the immune system to build antibodies and react to the invader, but should any in <clears throat> invader antigen <clears throat> return the body is now sensitized to it and will provide a secondary response will, which will be much quicker 
The chemical alarms will trigger, sending signals to the antibody troops that were previously created to, um, to counter that antigen. The antibodies have just waited around for something to kill, so they immediately rush to the site of the attack. For this reason, when somebody develops a severe allergy, if they are ever exposed to that antigen again, they will get a fast, out-of-control response called anaphylaxis, which usually the onset will be within 60 seconds. Okay, common knowledge. Routes of exposure. Ingestion, injection, inhalation, and absorption. With ingestion, foods, medicines, um, you know, with injection, insects, medicines, um, like intravenous or hypodermic, um, inhalation, that's pretty common sense, and absorption, which is also fairly common sense. Common foods associated with anaphylaxis. Peanuts, soybeans, are a significant cause of anaphylaxis. Also recently, um, almonds and cashews have also been kind of shown signs um, with within uh, patients. <clears throat> a lot of people may uh, unknowingly ingest these types of products via derivatives in uh, certain foods. Typically people who have um, se severe allergies will also display hypervigilance for the food that they eat. However, there al are always those times where that may not be the case or where they just didn't realize or know that they had derivatives. So if you have somebody who's starting to show signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, ask them what they're allergic to, what they've recently ate. Cod, halibut, and shellfish. Um, shellfish is a really big one and um, typically, like I said, the hypervigilance, um, it's, it's a lot harder to uh, disguise these types of food products and um, without you knowing them. Egg whites, strawberries, food additives, um, with all the chemicals that they add to food and, um, and beverages, some people have to maintain that sense of awareness. Wheat and buckwheat, sesame and sunflower seeds, milk, mangoes, onions, <coughs> Respiratory related signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis are upper airway and lower airway. When we discuss the upper airway, you're going to um, you're going to listen for their um, inspiration. So you want to check to hear listen for hoarseness, strider, laryngeal or epiglottic edema, um, which in that case you are going to want to do a rapid transport. Lower airway, bronchiospasm, increased mucus production, accessory muscle use, wheezing, and decreased breath sounds. Hemodynamic cardiac signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis are as follows. <clears throat> Tachycardia, hypotension, dysrhythmias, chest tightness, chest pain, and shock. Hypotension may occur in anaphylactic reactions. Signs and symptoms, additionally, of anaphylaxis are as follows. Gastrointestinal systems, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, cramps, and diarrhea. Now, the reason why is because your body is trying to rid itself of that poison. It's almost, if you look at it like eating bad food, you know, your body is going to try to remove it in whichever means possible, either be it from the mouth or uh, the other side of the body. So that's one of the things you may want to uh, try to ascertain. Cutaneous signs, angioedema, tongue swelling, urethemia, skin redness, uticaria, hives, pruritus, itching, and lacrimation, eyes tearing. <clears throat> What can we do to manage anaphylaxis? In some cir circumstances, you can remove the offending agent, uh, be it a bee sting, 
either use a credit card or a blade-like object um, and try and scrape it away. You can also try to scrape it away with your fingernails but never attempt to pinch it because what you're going to do is you're going to inject more venom into the body. Airway and ventilation. Uh, airway treatment and management. If you have a, um, a paramedic there, they're going to take more invasive actions. Circulation. Uh, really, there's not a whole lot more we can do in that uh, regard. Um, if you should have to, um, cardiopulmonary resuscitation is your, um, you know, at the, the tail end of everything. So if that's something you have to do, then obviously that's what you have to do. And obviously, treatment will be dependent upon the presentation and the severity. <coughs> Special notes for anaphylactoid reactions. Anaphylactic and anaphylactoid reactions are both hypersensitivity to reaction, or excuse me, reactions, where anaphylactic reactions require prior sensitization to a foreign substance, and anaphylactoid reactions do not. They're both treated the same. EpiPen. <clears throat> We're going to discuss the epinephrine auto injector at this time. Um, as BLS providers, we are all aware of what epinephrine is and how it's used. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of refreshment on the EpiPens and we'll get started on that. Epinephrine is a medication used in the emergency treatment of severe allergic reactions, anaphylaxis. This product acts quickly to improve breathing, stimulate the heart rays, <clears throat> dropping blood pressure and reverse hives and reduce swelling of the face, lips and throat. For epinephrine administration, request advanced life support if available. Do not delay transport to the appropriate hospital. Assure that, ensure the patient's airway is open and that breathing and circulation are adequate. Suction is necessary. After you've done so, administer high flow O2 via non-rebreather. <clears throat> Determine that the patient has a diagnosed history of anaphylaxis, severe allergic reaction, and or a recent exposure to allergen or inciting agent. As I mentioned before, have they been stung by a bee? Have they been uh, exposed to something that they have allergic reactions to? Um, have they eaten anything which may contain nuts or dairy or other products which would be considered allergens? See if you can find that information. Have they eaten shellfish? Have they consumed something? Um, you know, whatever be the reason for their anaphylactic shock, try to ascertain that information. You know, you get your OPQRST, your sample history, and you play that detective for that brief period of time, trying to find out what's going on with that patient. If cardiac and respiratory status is normal, transport the patient while performing frequent and ongoing assessments. Um, I would consider this personally a um, severe emergency, so I would probably reassess every five minutes. EpiPen administration. If either cardiac or respiratory status is abnormal, proceed as follows. If the patient is having severe respiratory distress or hypoperfusion and has been prescribed an EpiPen auto injector, assist the patient in administering the EpiPen. If the patient's auto injector is not available or expired and, e and the EMS agency carries an EpiPen, administer the epinephrine as authorized by the agency's medical director. <clears throat> In this type of situation, you need to do several things. Number one, you need to be in contact with medical control or your medical director. You need to um, make sure you, you follow the five rights, okay? You need to have a firm understanding of epinephrine and how the EpiPens are administered. You need to certainly, most importantly, understand your protocols. So, 
with the auto uh, the auto injector it's very self-explanatory it's like an AED you know they got these nice little charts you know little drawing diagrams and it's very self-explanatory so <clears throat> if it comes down to the fact that you need that this patient needs epi and they're not able to do it you can assist the patient um, if medical control gives you authorization to do anything other that is up to me your medical director and also your local and state protocols if the patient has not been prescribed an epi auto injector begin transport and contact medical control for authorization to administer an epi pen if it's available in most scenarios in which i've seen if there's an epi pen it's in the drug box which is handled only by the ALS provider. So if this is the case, you're kind of in a, a safe zone because you also have a paramedic who is uh, more educated and more well suited to provide these uh, invasive techniques. Contact medical control for authorization for a second administration of epinephrine if needed. Refer immediately to any other appropriate protocol. If cardiac arrest occurs, perform CPR according to the AHA, ARC, and NSC standards and refer to the cardiac arrest protocol. Transport immediately. Perform an ongoing assessment. Obtain and record the patient's initial vital signs. Repeat en route as often as the situation indicates and be alert for changes in the patient's levels. So as I said before, rapid transport. <clears throat> ALS intersect if you um, are on a BLS unit and uh, reassess every five minutes. Record all the patient care information including the patient's medical history and all treatment provided um, on the scene. If epinephrine has already been administered Continue to reassess respiratory effort and vital signs with immediate rapid transportation. Transition of care. Epinephrine auto injectors for anaphylactic reactions with respiratory distress or hypoperfusion. Hypo when arriving on the scene of a patient experiencing an anaphylactic reaction, if the patient is being treated by a first responder who has administered epinephrine by auto injector, the EMS provider should immediately confirm the patient's status and pay close attention for signs and symptoms of respiratory distress and hypoperfusion. As mentioned, if you don't have an ALS provider on the unit with you, request one. Gather the following information. Determine the substance that the patient was exposed to how long ago the, the exposure occurred, the initial symptoms the patient reported, the time and dosage of the epinephrine administration, the name of the individual who administered it, and the patient's response to the treatment. <clears throat> Medical control should always be contacted. Excuse me. EpiPen and Twin Inject. Medication name the generic name is epinephrine, the trade is adrenaline, and the, the delivery system is EpiPen or EpiPen Junior or Twin Inject, adult or child size. <clears throat> Indications. Patient exhibits signs of severe allergic reactions including either respiratory distress or shock hypoperfusion. Medication is prescribed for the patient by a physician or is carried on the ambulance. Medical direction authorizes use for this patient. <clears throat> Contraindic contraindications, reasons that would pro uh, prohibit you from providing this, um, this medication. There are no contraindications when used in a life-threatening situation. Medication form. Liquid administered by auto injector, an automatically injectable needle, or a syringe system. Now, this is uh, probably the most important thing in the event that a syringe system has to be used. For adults, your dosage is 0.3 milligrams. For 
in infant and child, 0.15 milligrams. Actions. It's going to dilate the bronchioles. Some side effects. <clears throat> Increased heart rate, pallor, dizziness, chest pain, headache, nausea, vomiting, excitably, and anxiety. Well, let's put those two together. They're going to be panicked. They're going to be excited. Okay, especially somebody's um, airway is uh, becoming compromised. You go from breathing normally to all of a sudden suffocating, you know, from yourself. You're going to be excited. You're going to be panicked. Okay. <clears throat> and when I discussed earlier about suctioning the airway, especially in a situation like this with side effects, vomiting. Um, you always want to keep that section on hand because if they're already having airway compromise, you don't need any further compromise from via vomit. Okay. Reassessment strategies: transport, continue focus assessment of airway breathing and circulatory status. If the patient's condition continues to worsen, um, which some of the ways that could happen is decreasing mental status, increasing breath, uh, breathing difficulty, decreased blood pressure. Obtain medical direction for an additional dose of epinephrine. Treat for shock hyperperfusion. Prepare to initiate basic life support procedure if the patient's condi condition improves. Provide supportive care by continuing oxygen therapy and treat for shock. <clears throat> Here are just a couple of the, uh, the auto injectors. Let's talk about how you're going to inject these. First, we want to obtain the patient's prescribed auto injector. Inscri ensure the prescription is written for the patient who is experiencing the severe allergic reaction or your protocols permit carrying the auto injector on the ambulance. <clears throat> Medication is not discolored, if you can tell. Obtain an order for medical direction either online or offline. Remove the safety cap from the auto injector and place the tip of the auto injector against the patient's thigh. This will be on the lateral portion of the thigh midway between the waist and the knee. <clears throat> Push the injector firmly against the thigh until the injector activates. Hold the injector in place until the medication is injected, so you're going to typically wait for at least about 10 seconds. Record the activity and time. Dispose of the single dose injector such as the EpiPen in the Sharps container. Save a two dose injector such as a twin jet and transport with the patient in case a second dose is later required. <clears throat> One thing I'd like to uh, cover before we conclude this lesson is the five rights of medication administration. <clears throat> Sometimes they get forgotten when you don't uh, typically run into situations where as a BLS provider you're not really dealing with administration of medication as much as an ALS provider and because we're so limited on our practice that I know that it's easy to forget. But for the sake of the lesson, I'd like to discuss the five rights of medication administration. Number one, you want to make sure you have the right person. <clears throat> you want them to state their full name. You want to check their medication. This will correlate into number two, the right medication. You're going to check the prescription and the label and make sure that everything meets up. You want to check the right dosage. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 0.3 milligrams for an adult and 0.15 for a child. Typically, if they're going to have their own auto inject, it's going to be measured out that way. <clears throat> right time. Um, in that type of scenario, you're going to be basing your timing on medical control and what they tell you. But one of the most important things is to write down what time you administer that uh, injection and right route. <clears throat> That's pretty common sense in these types of uh, injections, but stranger things have happened. So, 
um, just make sure that you're following your uh, your little diagram presented on the injector pen and um, and just always keep your head on a swivel and always make sure you look out for yourself uh, with that I will conclude this lesson thank you for your time